So, in third place, for music math, does music follow a Ziphian distribution? Brian Best. Hi, I'm Brian Best. I'm a junior, and um, my project involved studying note frequency in music to see if it fit into the natural math of our brains, which is Ziff's Law. And I found that music doesn't necessarily fit into Ziff's Law, but every song had a similar pattern. So it's not entirely random, and music could have its own place in the brain's math. And in second place, Smart Safety Warning and Notification System for Treadmills, Himanshu Minosha. What I did is I created a combination of hardware and software that uh, collect distance data uh, between the ultrasonic sensor and the user every uh, a thousand times every second. And then this data is transmitted uh, via Bluetooth uh, to a mobile app running on Apple's iOS, Google's Android, or Apple's uh, Watch OS. And then this data is segmented into three virtual zones, the green zone, the yellow zone, and the red zone. Uh, each zone invokes a different response uh, from uh, the device. So in the green zone, nothing happens because it's assumed that this is where the runner is most comfortable uh, and nothing is happening. First thing I would do is when I install the hardware mm -hmm. is I would uh, pair automatically to the Bluetooth chip and then set up my green zone. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, uh, it's six inches away from this uh, brick right here. And then I would set up my yellow zone, which would be right here, which is 17 inches away. Mm -hmm. And then the final zone would be the red zone, which is 23 inches away. So now I've gotten all three of my zones configured and you would only need to do this once. So after this, these uh, preferences are saved. So now every time I start a run, I'm going to, as long as I'm in the green zone, I'm not gonna get any feedback. But the second I move out of my, out of this zone, my phone is starting to buzz and ring. But if the runner falls, I'm going to get this notification on my phone that asks if I'm okay to which I'm going to reply yes because I'm not hurt. But if I was hurt, a phone call would be, uh, a phone call would be made to uh, my house, which is my uh, first emergency contact, and then it would keep going through the list of emergency contacts I have listed on my phone. And our first place student worked very hard and had an excellent presentation. The effects of appreciation on individual happiness by Freya Proudman. <laughs> My project was the effect of appreciation on individual happiness. So a lot of research has shown that when you do good for others, it makes the other person feel good, but not a lot of research shows how that makes you feel happy in return. So the object of my study was to see how, by doing good for others, how that makes a person conducting these acts feel. So I had 20 volunteers, all a range of different demographics, no restrictions or anything. And then I came up with these tasks from studying Aristotle and these philosophers that I thought would have an effect on happiness, but we didn't know what type of effect that really did have. So on day one, the participants conducted task one. So for example, task one was smile at 15 random people. And then after they completed this task, they would say how this affected their average happiness. So on average, compared to their average happiness, so how much happiness they usually feel on a daily basis, did doing this task, did smiling at 15 random people, increase their happiness or decrease their happiness compared to their average? So looking at this one, we see that task one created all the participants had their happiness increased. Everybody had an increase in happiness. So then we can look at why did other things not really increase their happiness. So for example, when holding the door for other people, a, a participant noticed that when they were holding the door open for people, it didn't matter if 20 people said thank you. The one person who didn't say thank you 
less that lasting effect on them and didn't increase that person's happiness because they weren't appreciated back. So we see this whole reciprocated idea of happiness and how doing good for others helps you to be happy, but also appreciating others and acknowledging that others are doing good helps make them and everybody happy in return. So in all, I found that 92% of participants became more happy by doing good for others and doing appreciation and doing and conducting gratitude for others 